Good afternoon, ladies and menfolk, and welcome to Word Ninjas Live, episode 20. That's right, we've made it to 20 whole episodes so far, so to make things special, it's just me. Now, uh, apparently real life has really gotten in the way of things lately for the podcast crew, and for various reasons, no one else was really able to make it this Sunday. So, it's just you and me today. But we thought we'd have a show anyway. But just as a heads up, this is going to be kind of a quick hits episode since I'm the only one here. So let's get things rolling with episode 20. Normally, yeah, we are a live stream of various writers discussing trials and tribulations involved in achieving literary productivity. That's the normal spiel, but today it's just me, so... You get a monologue! Yay! Uh, our talking points for this week, or monologue points, haha. Ta -ha. Monologue point number one, the week four nano status update. Because if you're watching this live, it is still November. And that means nano is still going on. It is only day 24 out of 30, so there's still lots of words to write. I was unable to get a status update on everyone else on the crew's nano word counts for the moment, but for myself, I'm currently sitting at about 30,000 words on day 24. That means I am behind. Not horribly behind, but behind. Yeah, I did not really write last week. Uh, not I basically wrote Saturday, which, what is that, I guess the 13th maybe it was? And then last week's episode happened, and I didn't really write that day, and then real life smacked me upside the head with a 2x4 for the week, so writing didn't really happen last week, and then I managed 5,000 yesterday. So at least I've hit the 30,000 mark. I kind of hope to do another 5,000 today, and we'll see how the week goes. But, uh... Basically, I just focused on everything else other than Nano the past week because there are lots of things on my to-do list that really should be taken care of. So I prioritized. I focused on the non-writing stuff to try and hammer that out since this week, coming week, I have off from my regular day job, so I'm hoping all that extra time where I'm not traveling or staring at a computer screen playing with Excel spreadsheets... I can focus on writing and working f on full coverage writers' endeavors, because there are a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of FCW stuff that I have not been doing or keeping up with, like the website posts. If anyone's been there lately, I'm sure you're getting a little cranky at my hit and miss updates. I'm hoping to clean all that out this week and make things nice and pretty looking for you all. So look forward to that. I know I've been really bad about that lately. I really hope to kind of get a little more reliable on that stuff. And yeah, my original goal was to hit 50,000 words on day 25, so basically 2,000 words a day. Since I'm at 30,000 words at the moment, I don't know how well that's going to work out. I mean, I could theoretically do 5,000 today. That's feasible theoretically, and then try and power through with 15,000 tomorrow. I mean, I got nothing else tomorrow, but 15,000 would beat my all-time record of 10,000 words in a day. And that burnt me out for a whole week. So, who knows? On December 1st broadcast, episode 21, we shall see how everyone fared. I think life for everyone will be a little less hectic by then, or at least I hope. Because, yeah, it's been a little ridiculous this week for everyone for various reasons. But, yeah, sitting at 30,000 words, I have ideas that can get me to 35 easily enough today. After that, I don't know how tomorrow's going to go. We'll see. I'm hopeful, but who knows. Hopefully the rest of you out there are faring well so far with Nano and will finish on time. And I'm sure some of you are ahead and are more than comfortable with the word counts you have at the moment and don't really have to rush. 
good for you. Seriously, that's not meant to be sarcastic or anything. Good for you. You're doing great. The rest of us have a little more work to do. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And I guess the monologue point number two for today was going to be how do you prevent story burnout? Because, I mean, there are a lot of us out there who are just powering through our outlines. And... Okay. And, yeah, we're burning up all of our story points pretty quickly, and eventually we're going to have to just start making things up as we go along. So it's going to be pretty interesting the next week as we all try to hit 50,000 words one way or the other. I mean, I know that I have a couple thousand more words in my outline, but then the rest, it was all written out as, figure this out later. Well, it's later, and now I have to figure it out. Yay. But one thing I've actually learned just from myself is to prevent story burnout, it really depends on the story. But, I mean, as long as there's steady progress made, no matter how little or large, even if it's just a couple notes per day or outlining a scene that you want to do later, as long as you have it in mind, then the whole mental wall against getting back into the flow of the story, it's not as bad. I mean, there have been plenty of times where I did not focus on a story for a couple of weeks and then trying to get back into it, the enthusiasm, the passion just was not there. And it's hard to get back into something after you take a couple days or weeks or months off because you lose the mindset. You're not really in that story 24-7 anymore, and it's hard to get back into it. But if you do even like a minimal 100 words a day just to keep it on your mental radar of, okay, this is the story I'm trying to work on. Here's some ideas for when I actually have time or can focus on working on it. Okay, now I can do some of this. And then that's how I powered through 5,000 words yesterday. But, yeah, it's interesting and tricky to figure out. And uh, this is why I try to make notes as I go along, because then when I have the time to think or focus on it, then, all oh, right, I have stuff. It's been on my mind, so I can figure things out and make do. It's getting a little trickier to find the time to work on this regularly or reliably, but such is life. You have to adapt. Yeah, I really am just going to power through stuff. This is going to be like a half an hour episode because there's no one else to discuss things with, which is a shame. And I don't really want to ramble for ten whole minutes on this is how you can prevent story burnout. Ramble, ramble, ramble. It's better when there's a discussion, but yeah, say la vie. And kind of a follow-up monologue for that would be number three talking point number three of how do you determine deadlines that need to be hit and deadlines that are negotiable? And how do you keep on track for each type? Now, this one has always been kind of a tricky one for me, considering I have deadlines for work, I have deadlines for my stories, I have deadlines for full coverage writers, I have deadlines for school and honors group and half dozen other organizations I'm a part of in one way, shape, or form. So it's hard to figure out which deadlines take priority, which ones should I focus on now, which ones should I focus on later, which ones can I ignore, stuff like that. Um, a lot of it is a balance of how motivated am I to reach that deadline, and the other half of it really is, do I need to do this for someone else? Who's counting on me to do this? by the deadline date. I mean, if it's for work, that's a pretty good motivation, and there are people counting on me to do it, usually by deadline or earlier. So those I tend to prioritize and just power through and get done as best I can. There have been some that I've had to roll back the deadline just for one reason or another. It happens, but for the most part, those I'm pretty good about. For writing, not so much. Those are a little trickier, 
because most of the time, it's on me. The only one I hold myself accountable to is myself, and I am not a good taskmaster. Taskmaster, especially against myself, which is why a lot of my deadlines, I don't hit them. I just wave as they go by because, well, no one needs this from me. It's all on me, so I'm just going to focus on the stuff where other people are counting on me. And then my stuff just gets farther and farther set back and then sometimes just doesn't happen, period. Yeah, so I really do need the peer pressure most of the time, even if it's like I'm going to post on the Facebook page saying, hey, these are my goals and this is when I'm going to do it by. If I don't do it by then, they can call me out on it if they want or ignore it entirely, but just that tiny little bit can usually be enough to kickstart me into at least working on stuff. And that's why I've tried to coordinate with others a lot to ensure that my stupid deadlines for stuff that actually matter, like stuff for full coverage writers where it really does need to get done. I know it's on me, but it needs to get done. I mean, if I tell other people, okay, here's the deadlines for these things, then, all right, I've told them, they're expecting it, I should really get it done. Never mind the posts that I'm behind on and all that. I'm getting to it, really. I'll do that this week, I swear. See? I'm doing it live on the broadcast, so it's required now. i got to do it. Otherwise, you can all point and laugh at me next week. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely helpful to try and coordinate with others, even if it's just unofficial, like, hey, I want to try and do this by then, so touch base with me on that day to see if I did it. It's not much, but it can help. And, of course, if it's for work or for pay or for whatever, then, yeah, that's a pretty good motivation, too. Or at least it should be. I mean, there are some people who just miss deadlines for paid jobs and all that as well, but that's not good for business. And for all you future viewers and listeners out there, feel free to post in the comments uh, your opinions and methods for preventing story burnout. What happens when you do have story burnout? How do you cope with that? Do you manage to find a way back into the story, or does it just kind of die? And same for the deadlines. Do you hit your deadlines? Do you miss the deadlines? How do you manage? What are your methods? All right, we're kind of changing up the whole what have you been reading, what have you been writing segment, or at least that's my goal, since no one is here to countermand my orders. Tough for them. An evolved segment of what are your writing goals for the upcoming week? because it, I think it actually helps to have a goal of some sort, not necessarily the deadline to go with it, although that helps as well, but just some sort of goal like, this is what I want to accomplish. So putting it out there, you already say, like, I'm doing this. And now you've said it, so you got to do it. Or at least try, make an effort. Every little bit helps. And for myself... Like, my ideal all-out goal is to do the 5,000 words today, probably after the podcast, and then the full 15,000 tomorrow. If I could actually hit the 50,000 goal on the 25th, which was my original goal for the month, that would be pretty kick-ass. It's kind of like do-or-die time now. It's all or nothing. Yes, I have the rest of the week to do it if I fail on that goal, but what if... I should do the all-out goal, or at least try to do the all-out goal, and then if stuff comes up tomorrow, if I sprain another toe, break an arm, whatever, real life gets in the way, it has a, it's pretty good at doing that. But If I set my all-out goal and strive to reach it, then who knows, I could easily enough reach 10,000 words tomorrow. And that would be fantastic. Wouldn't be the full 15, but... I mean, 10,000 would be pretty darn good. And then I'd only have 5,000 left to go for the week, which, fair enough. And we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know next episode on December 1st. And kind of a follow-up to that little 
part or the second half of this segment would be the how did last week's weeks go last week's goals go and seeing as this is the initial evolution of this segment I didn't have any set for last week so meh I don't even know what my unofficial goals for last week were I guess kind of like survive work survive school make it through the week and yay I did not the most prolific of goals survive the week but sometimes that's the most we can do just get through the days and for your for it, those of you who watch or listen to us regularly we did not do a week three nano vlog of how everyone's doing because real life got in the way and I don't think we really wanted to bum people out with yeah we're not doing that well things are in the way but I think we're going to try for a week four. Uh, I don't think it's going to be on Thursday because Thursday is Thanksgiving around here and for the other crew members. So uh, if it happens, it'll be on this Friday, so the 29th. And we'll post notices out accordingly if we do manage to pull it together. But uh, chances are by then, some of us will just be spazzing out about this is how many words I need to get before the end of thir the end of Friday. No, the end of Saturday. Saturday is the last day. Yeah, a lot of us are going to be spazzing out near the end of the week. Like, it's almost the end of the month. We have to fit hit 50,000. And then we're all just Kermit arm flailing in circles. So we'll keep you posted on that. We'll see. And... I'm sure we've kind of probably mentioned it before, but uh, it is now official. We are going to Connecticon 2014. We have our booth reserved. We have the hotel reserved. Everything's locked in and good to go. We're waiting for the panel submissions to open up, actually. We're hoping to do a couple panels in 2014 while we're there on various writing topics. So once that goes up and we can post some of those panel ideas, we can talk a little more in detail about that. And it is also effectively official at this point. I mean, there's a 10% chance at this point that we will be at Anime Boston in 2014. We did not make the first round. We did not make the second round. They have a third round, but that's getting to the realm of wait list. So it is what it is. Yeah, maybe 2015 will be our year, but... Uh, yeah, we'll see. Like I said, 10% chance at this point. So Once we know fully, officially, 100% if we are or are not going, then we'll say so accordingly. Right. Onward to writing prompts. Might as well power through everything at the moment. As always, or at least every week, we do writing prompts. Now it's time to bring those up on the screen for all of you. Yeah, there we go. This week's writing prompts, as always, can be found over at fcwriters.com under the right, under the Muse Food page. And the most recent uh, post of writing prompts is always on the home page as well. So you're welcome to click through via that way. And we have our 10 one-liners, our 10 one-worders, and we've also inserted the story cube combination for the week utilizing Rory's Story Cubes, available over at storycubes.com. We are not affiliated with them. We are not sponsored by them. We just appreciate their materials. And I'm sure that... Uh, I had a sentence going there. Lost it. Anyway, prompts. The one-liners for this week. Stop beating it over there. All I wanted was a biscuit and some coffee. What is the phrase that pays? Digging a hole with a chainsaw won't end well. Stealing weights is not how you start exercising. What sort of night results in vomiting pizza for five blocks? The internet is down. Everybody panic. 
If you don't fire that dragon, I'll quit. How can this be seamless? All I want to do, all I wanted to do was have a quick interface with you. And the one worders for this week are bead, amusing, weather, hateful, scattered, glow, chew, promise, substance, and request. And I guess I will be interpreting the story cubes for this week. We got a little blue-shirted dude pointing and staring at something, possibly at the blue-haired dude next to him with headphones on, listening to something. We also have some waves going on on one cube. What I'm going to guess is a capsule pill of some sort, a horned helmet, an eye with a few lashes on top, someone cutting up a piece of paper, a lightning bolt, and one very angry looking dude. So make of these prompts what you will. And as always, it's not necessary to use any or all of these prompts. They're meant just as an extra resource for you to use when your muse is tired and cranky and there are deadlines to be made. And if you write a flash fiction or short story utilizing these prompts, we'd love to read it. Email us a copy at, of your short piece or the URL where we can read it. Just send us a message over at wordninja at fcwriters.com. That's wordninja without an S at fcwriters with an S dot com. All right. Taking down the screen share. There we go. And with that, this may be the shortest episode yet of Word Ninjas Live. But considering it is the last week of Nano and a lot of you still have words to write, myself included, maybe it's for the best that we're just powering through this episode this week. That way we can all start moving towards getting back to our Nanos and trying to power through that word count. So, on that note, it's time for the brought to you by micro segment. Because we are brought we are bringing multiple things to you as always. So, support the international organization that inspired books like Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen, The Beautiful Land by Alan Averill, and Dragon and Dragon Whisperer by Tom Quackenbush. That's a great name. So go donate to National Novel Writing Month and support your fellow writers as they work towards their stories and publish them. Because we need more creative books to read. There's always space for more books to read. And NaNoWriMo really does help a lot of writers figure out their stories. And of course, yeah, you have to edit them and clean them up afterwards, but that's not for November, that's for December and onwards. Okay. And are you a fan of Naruto by any chance? Get thee to the Konoha Corner podcast. Live streamed on Fridays at around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Konoha Corner podcast is running their final countdown to episode 200. Episode 200 is going to air sometime in January, I believe, so they only have about eight episodes left, give or take, so catch them while you can. And if you're more into fairy tale, the same cast and crew is running the live stream of Fairy Tale Podcast on Monday nights at around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in to either or both shows for manga and anime reviews, fanfic, dubbing, and more. The links to their YouTube pages can be found in our show notes over on fcwriters.com, or you can just go to YouTube, search for Kona Hawk Corner Podcast or Fairy Tale Podcast. They come up pretty quickly. And as always, if you enjoy or appreciate the content over here at Full Coverage Writers, then but we would appreciate you by 
going over to fcwriters.com and clicking on the Word Ninjas podcast page, and up at the top is a PayPal donation link because running things is not free, and we want to continue bringing you all of our current endeavors and more, but it's hard to privately fund things. We will for as long as necessary, but every little bit helps because the more funds we have, the more we can do, and the more we can bring you. And believe me, we have a whole slew of things that we want to bring you. It's just we're slowly budgeting to ramp things up little by little. As I was saying, PayPal donation link. For certain amounts that you donate to us, we provide benefits back to you because it's really all about you guys. We like supporting other writers, other creative people, however we can. So for $1 donation, you get a shout-out. Promote your site, social media account, podcast, or just say hello. If you up that to 5 bucks, you get to ask a talking points question on the show. So if there's something you want us to banter about or dig into, then by all means, send us the question, and for 5 bucks, you'll get the entire crew talking. And I promise that it will be more than just me on one of those episodes. Now, if you up that to a whole $10... You sponsor the entire episode. So for an entire episode of podcasty goodness, we will praise you and promote whatever you want promoted, as long as it complies with YouTube regulations and all that ridiculousness. But that's kind of understood. So yeah, it is time to wrap things up. In about 30 minutes, all these things said and done. Yeah, definitely quickest podcast episode ever. I can and I can actually guarantee you that next week's episode, episode 21, will be longer because we have a special guest on next week up next week's episode. Uh, December 1st, we are going to have Kit Campbell on the show. She was actually on episode nine way back when but we're bringing her back so that she can discuss her latest book release that will actually be on December 1st. So stay tuned for that. That's actually going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. So we're going to discuss her recent or her book release on that date. Shards is the title of the book. And we're really going to get to learn a little bit more about the book and her process from bringing it from brain to bookshelf. So come back next week for a little more dialogue and less monologue. All right, this has been Charles, your instigator of literary insanity. Apparently I've scared all the other co-hosts away after 20 episodes. I'll try and bring them back. Uh, If you want to check out any of our other literary endeavors, from writing prompts to reading recommendations and more, go over to fcwriters.com. And if you're more for social media, we're over on Tumblr at fcwordninja.tumblr.com. Over on Facebook at facebook.com slash fullcoveragewriters. Our literary Twitter handle is at fcwordninja. And if you just want to email us for whatever reason, that is wordninja at fcwriters.com. Remember, wordninja without the S at fcwriters with the S dot com. And with that, signing out for another week. Hopefully the rest of you all and myself will get writing already. Adios. I'm hoping to clean all that out this week and make things nice and pretty looking for you all. So look forward to that. I know I've been really bad about that lately. I really hope to kind of get a little more reliable on that stuff. And yeah, my original goal was to hit 50,000 words on day 25, so basically 2,000 words a day. Since I'm at 30,000 words at the moment, I don't know how well that's going to work out. I mean... I could theoretically do 5,000 today. That's feasible. 
theoretically, and then try and power through with 15,000 tomorrow. I mean, I got nothing else tomorrow, but 15,000 would beat my all-time record of 10,000 words in a day. And that burnt me out. Basically, I just focused on everything else other than Nano the past week because there are lots of things on my to-do list that really should be taken care of. So I prioritized. I focused on the non-writing stuff to try and hammer that out. Since this week, coming week, I have off from my regular day job, so I'm hoping all that extra time where I'm not traveling or staring at a computer screen playing with Excel spreadsheets, I can focus on writing and working on full coverage writer's endeavors, because there are a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of FCW stuff that I have not been doing or keeping up with, like the website posts. If anyone's been there lately, I'm sure you're getting a little cranky at my hit and miss update. Good afternoon, ladies and menfolk, and welcome to Word Ninjas Live, episode 20. That's right, we've made it to 20 whole episodes so far. So to make things special, it's just me. Now, uh, apparently real life has really gotten in the way of things lately for the podcast crew. And for various reasons, no one else was really able to make it this Sunday. So it's just you and me today. But we thought we'd have a show anyway. But... Just as a heads up, this is going to be kind of a quick hits episode since I'm the only one here. So let's get things rolling with episode moment, but for myself, I'm currently sitting at about 30,000 words on day 24. That means I am behind. Not horribly behind, but behind. Yeah, I did not really write last week. Uh, Not I basically wrote Saturday, which, what is that, I guess the 13th maybe it was? And then last week's episode happened, and I didn't really write that day, and then real life smacked me upside the head with a 2x4 for the week, so writing didn't really happen last week, and then I managed 5,000 yesterday. So at least I've hit the 30,000 mark. I kind of hope to do another 5,000 today, and we'll see how the week goes. But, uh... 20. Normally, yeah, we are a live stream of various writers discussing trials and tribulations involved in achieving literary productivity. That's the normal spiel, but today it's just me, so you get a monologue. Yay. Uh, Our talking points for this week, or monologue points, haha. uh, Monologue point number one, the week four nano status update. Because if you're watching this live, it is still November. And that means Nano is still going on. It is only day 24 out of 30, so there's still lots of words to write. I was unable to get a status update on everyone else on the crew's Nano word counts for the 